should be. Um, um, you're like, the window is a little bit small, but that's it. Oh, I can yeah, fix I that. It like changes because you connected to the yeah. Cool. Alright. How's that? Yeah, Alright, cool. Uh, I guess we should get started then? Yeah. Alright. Um, so we're going to get started. Got. What? Alright, we're not going to get started. There's pizza. <laughs> or Thai food, I guess. Alright, we'll get started in two minutes. Alright, the Twitch stream can also have food with us, but not our food, sorry. Yeah, Twitch stream, if you if you need two minutes to get a snack, uh, now is the time, I guess. Okay. We need someone to explain um, the thing about dropping resources um, and how you don't actually drop resources. Yeah. I think you should have Josh explain that. Yeah. Josh. Is Josh here? Yeah, Josh, could you explain? So we have a list of like things we want to announce, and a lot of them. Uh, could you explain them? Because we don't know what to talk about. So, uh, to send other people signaling, you can do invisible robots, which okay. includes invisible robots. Oh, uh, I see. We should... Robots who you can, like, who you can hear about. I think I added that to the docs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. It's just it might be in uh, Yeah, we should. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, because it's slightly non trivial. Yeah. Cool. Oh, interesting. Is this the new visualizer? Yeah. Oh, when did it come out? I just pushed it. Um, There's a new visualizer? Oh, look at that. We've got, we got interesting things on the side. I don't know what that means. Oh, I need a replay file. But, um, whatever. I don't know what that means. Uh, you know which items over there are vegetarian? Uh, yeah, the tofu, uh, the table closer to the plate. Yeah, it, there's like the, another just like the, uh, the, the other table is chicken. Uh, uh, it should be, uh, it's only tofu and chicken. Okay. So the one with just tofu, the one on the right table, that one's vegetarian. Yep. Yeah. One on the right. How is the food? How is it? Bless. Okay. Oh, nice. Pepper skies. Pizza for chat. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so this makes sense. This is the amount of fuel and carbonite that each team has. So the green is carbonite, and it's static because the lead here is mining, and here every team gets a certain allotment of fuel every turn. So, yeah. That's cool. Makes sense. I should make a replay. Oh, I will make a replay as part of the demo. Yeah. All right. Um, make sure you've uh, updated it, though. Oh, yeah. That's part of the demo, too. <laughs> it's important. Yeah. It's important every 30 minutes <laughs> to update update BC19. So theoretically, I should give you a warning. Mm -hmm. It checks every 20 seconds whether, you've, um, whether you are up to date. So it should give you a warning. Oh, okay. Good. But I wouldn't rely on that. <laughs> sure. That's very good, sir. Are there still a lot of people outside? What? Are there still a lot of people outside? Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry, Twitch stream. <laughs> You're all welcome to have some of the food also if you if you come to Building Thirty Two. <laughs> yeah. yeah.
if Twitch stores all the streams, right, so that people can see them later. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, they want to record all the files, and then Sweet. we still change the Nice. And we have a YouTube channel also, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. People who are not here, there's a YouTube channel with all of the lectures and stuff posted. F2L, I think, or is that what that's called? I don't remember, but yes, FTL, yes. We used to play FTL every time it was a lecture, but now we have a real battle code game. There's still a lot of people out there. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Smart. Smart. <laughs> All right. All right, Twitch stream. Do you have any good jokes? If you put a good joke in the chat, I will say it. Hey, are there still a lot of people outside? Mm -hmm. You guys who just came in, yeah? yeah. All right. Yeah, all right. I guess we'll wait a little bit more. We should have made clear MIT time. Um, all right. Yeah. All right. Let's let's begin. Um, all right. So first, some quick announcements. Um, there have been lots of updates and bug fixes and stuff. So make sure you run uh, npm install dash g bc19 like now, and then it'll yell at you if you're running an outdated version, hopefully. But just do it from time to time when you get errors, in case that's the problem. Um, a lot of people were confused about uh, the resource tiles. They are indeed infinite. If a tile has like a resource on it, when you send a pilgrim, right? Yes, a pilgrim there to mine the resources, they can just keep mining forever. 
except that you know they have a carrying capacity and like have to go bring it back to a castle or church or whatever and then you know and then it enters the global supply and other things can use it um but yes resource tiles are are infinite if you so shuttle shuttle resources as much as you can um you have more than one unit mining from the same resource no units cannot occupy the same tile if you try to move a unit to an occupied space it should throw an exception and if you don't catch that exception, your unit will die. Um, uh, it, it won't die, it just um, it won't do anything. Oh, sorry, that'll end its turn. Yeah. Oh, that's different. <laughs> that's good. That's a lot gentler than past years. <laughs> um, okay, uh, what other updates do we have? There will be a sprint tournament next Wednesday. Um, it's mostly for bragging rights. I think there's also a small prize and of course eternal glory for winning the sprint tournament which is the tournament that everyone cares the most about and um, yeah it's basically to help us rebalance the game see what strategies are extremely <laughs> dominant and need to be nerfed etc um, it's also fun to see what people have come up with after hacking around for just a week so that'll happen next Wednesday um, Oh yeah, we also want to clarify the whole like losing your resources when a unit dies thing. Josh, do you want to talk about that? Uh, yeah, so when... Do you want to talk about that so the Twitch stream can hear also? <laughs> um, so one of the components of this year's game is reclaim. So basically, if you are a unit and you attack another unit that's carrying some unrefined fuel and carbonite, um, you receive, and you destroy them, you receive all of their fuel, all of their carbonites, um, and half of the carbonite that was used to construct that unit. Uh, yeah. Just for, not globally, you just, uh, the robot that killed them gets that unrefined carbonite. So they still need to take that carbonite, right, and bring that somewhere else. And um, if that, like, if the reclaim is greater, it, if it ends up exceeding the capacity, of the robot that attacked, uh, it'll just be lost to the void. Yep. Do you know how much carbonite an enemy uses for the Uh, no. The question for Twitch was, do you know how much resources an enemy robot is carrying and therefore could like prioritize killing high resource robots? And the answer is no. Yes. Will there be any reclaim for destroying castles? Uh, so, no, I don't think so. Yeah, there's no reclaim for destroying castles. Uh, also, people are, are confused about the turn queue. Oh, yeah. So uh, another important concept is the turn queue. Uh, so battle code is made up of turns and then rounds. So like a robot's individual turn is like it like moving or trading or something like that. Um, initially, there's like a queue of robots that we basically go through and each robot, one by one, gets to perform an action. So it starts off by the red castle, followed by a blue castle, and if there's more than one castle per team, we continue to alternate red, blue, red, blue. And then if a castle or a church constructs a unit, that unit is added to the end of the turn queue, but it's, the unit gets to run in that current round, right? So if like a castle constructs a pilgrim, that pilgrim will get to move before that castle has its turn again. That makes sense. And this information is all at the end of the docs. Uh, people are also confused about signaling. signaling. Do you see signals from robots who moved earlier this turn? Uh, yes. So you can see all of the signals sent by robots before. Basically, your signal is wiped out uh, when you next go, right? So um, if I'm a pilgrim, right, and I signal, uh, until I move again, or until it's my turn again, uh, everybody can see that signal value, right? And it's originating from uh, the point that I move to, right? Uh, if that makes any sense. So if I move at the end of my turn, but I also send a signal, the source of that signal will be the place that I move to, assuming that the move is correct. All right, thank you. All right. Um, yeah. It consumes global fuel. All uh, expenditures of fuel and carbonite are spent from global stores. <coughs> All right, thanks. Um, okay. one last thing. Discord asks, are unit IDs ever reused after units have died? No, never. 
Unit IDs are never reused at Unit Twitch. IDs nope, they're random values, uh, I think, between 0 and 4096. Or, no, between 1 and 0, 4095. All right. Unless anyone has any other questions, we're going to jump into a demo of how to get started and improve the example player. Already a fearsome player, but we can make improvements. Um, all right, so the first things first. Uh, we need to update the battle code thing because it changes all the time. Uh, BC19. All right, and then while that's going, we're going to get the example player. So we'll go, well, I guess that's not a thing. Example function player. Hmm? Oh, right, sorry, I totally forgot. Um, we, yeah, we found that a lot of people just starting out are not super comfortable with terminal commands. So Ivy, do you want to do a quick terminal demo? Here. Do you have like tests? folders that I can mess around with, or just like make new folders. Uh, okay, like this command folders. makes a new directory. Yeah. <laughs> this command moves into the directory. Okay, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> okay, so um, when you start running terminal, like at the very beginning, you're going to be in your like overall computer directory, and you can access that by just typing cd, and that's like the tilde dollar sign that you see over there. And usually people want to access things from their desktop, so I can just type cd desktop, and that takes me, okay, there is no desktop here. What is your desktop well, called? Uh, it's called desktop, so if you, oh, uh, capital D. Okay. Yeah. There we go, okay. So now we're in the desktop, and then we can just access folders that exist. Um, currently, we have a test folder that's not in the desktop, so we're going to cd, and cd or cd dot dot right now can take you back to like the overall directory. So dot dot means like you're going one directory outside, so it'll take you like one outside. And then if you just type in cd without anything after it, it takes you back to your overall computer. So ne right now we're going to go into our test folder and just play around with some stuff. Um, let's do, let's make a new folder inside our test folder and that's going to be mkdir or make directory. And we'll call this like folder one. So now that we've made a new folder, we can cd into folder one. And if we type in ls, that gives us a list of everything that exists inside the folder. Since we just made that folder, it doesn't actually contain anything, but we can go type in cd dot dot, which takes us back to our test folder. And if we ls that folder, it shows that we have another folder that's folder one. And then you can also like check that this works by just going into your computer and oh, yes. yes, so yeah. um, a lot of the, these are all the Mac and it's that top one. These are all the Mac and Linux commands. Um, Windows has equivalents. Um, for example, ls is dir on Windows, but also if you install git, which is something that we'll talk a bit about in a minute, um, git comes with a convenient shell that is basically an emulator for the, the Linux and Mac version. So you could you could use all of these commands that we're showing you through that, um, which is why we're talking about these. Yeah. So if you just look at the home directory, we have this test folder here that we were playing around with earlier. And this is our folder one that we just made. And there's currently nothing in it. So if we want to go back to terminal, we can try something else. Um, is there like a random this function that you want right? Yeah, there's a control C. Uh, I mean, that's all the things that we'll use today, okay. probably, right? Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. But, and then, oh, PS would be confusing. I don't know for sure. Okay, let's not do PS. Yeah. Um, I'll do this one, and then we can finish. Okay. Yeah, so the last one you might want to know is PWD, which shows you the pathway that you've taken to find a specific folder. So right now, if we go into test, and then we go, go into folder one, we can type PWD, and it shows that we've gone from our home to our test folder to folder one. And that's just like useful for keeping track of where you are and where you want to save things. And now I'll take this back out so Nate can talk to you about Git. Okay. Uh, all right, so now we're going to start, uh, yeah, running, running, getting and running the example player, and then we'll modify it some. Um, so oh, there's also one more command that's important, which is rm to delete things. So I'm going to rm, and then the r is recursive, and f is force, so that it doesn't ask me if I'm sure. Um, and this will remove the test folder that we just made. Uh, okay, don't need that. Uh, great. OK. So here is the example player um, that, we, that a lot of people have been using already. So we're going to clone it um, with Git, which is like downloading, but it stays linked to um, this GitHub directory. So if I say, um, I think I already have example funks player. No, I deleted it. Good. OK, so if I do git clone, this will download this directory. I can now ls. It's in there. I can do example funks player and see what's inside. Bots and readme, which is what we would expect. Great. Um, and now I'm going to do run this example thing to produce an example game. So this is you're going to be running this command a lot. This is how you run matches um, while that's going. So the dash B is the blue team. Um, and then the, the folder that the blue team bot is in. So right now, blue team is going to be the example JavaScript player. And then dash R is the red team. So same thing, but for the red team, which is the example Python player. Um, dash dash CHI says initialize the chess clock. Die is initialize CH chess with 1,000 milliseconds for each player. Um, and I'm doing this because, especially when transpiling from Python, it takes a bit to get, like, get everything initialized. Um, we're working on that. Uh, but for now, just giving it a bit of extra time at the beginning should do the trick. Um, all right, so the game has ended. Blue won by random draw because I guess there was no destruction, which makes sense since the example player does not actually do any attacks. We can look at this replay file by dropping, doo -doo -doo, where's example funks player? By dropping the replay, which appeared wherever you ran the game. So now there's this replay.bc19. So we can take that replay and drop it on the website over here on the replay section, probably. There we go. And we have a new and improved viewer, which now shows you lots of team stats as well. So I think on the left is carbonite um, for each team, and the right is fuel for each team, um, where obviously red and blue are for the different teams. You can click on like this red castle here, and it tells you all kinds of stuff, like the health, the carbonite, and everything, um, all that good stuff. Uh, and then we can start a game just to see what's going on. And here, let me pause it now, and we can click on another unit. So this is of type robot. Uh, does it say the type more specifically? It's, uh, you can look at the icon and sort of figure it out. Oh, off right. Off my head, uh, if it's a, what, what's the unit number next to it? Oh, unit three. Okay, so that would be uh, zero is castle, one is church, Two is Pilgrim, three is Crusader. Uh, all right, so this three means Crusader. Uh, but you can also tell from the little icon here, these X's are crossed swords, which are Crusaders. Um, you can see that this Crusader is standing on a yellow fuel deposit. Um, so like, if I click on an open fuel deposit over here, it doesn't, it doesn't say anything, but that's fine. Green is, green is carbonite, uh, yellow is fuel. So we can just watch what happened during this game. These crusaders move around randomly. 
uh, from both teams. You can see that both teams have spent all of their carbonite, except for blue team hasn't made one last crusader for some reason. Oh yeah, there it goes. Okay, so they've both spent all their carbonite on crusaders. The crusaders aren't bringing back any more new carbonite, so that's not very helpful. Um, and they're kind of just running around randomly. The fuel keeps going up and down because you get some fuel every turn, uh, but then they're also spending it um, to do you know, the actions and stuff. So this is a, a basic replay of a game. The rest of, the, of it isn't going to be terribly exciting, so I'm just going to stop it. Um, but that's like the basic development process. You're going to make some changes, run a new game, upload the replay, and see what happens. So let's see about how you would want to go about changing the game. Um, first things first, you probably want to be able to collaborate with the rest of your team. So you could go to the IDE, the online one, um, which I don't have set up because I haven't joined a team yet, so you join a team first. Uh, and then go to the online editor and that's synced across your team. Or you could use something called Git, which is an awesome tool for version control, so keeping track of like changes that you've made and collaborating um, through GitHub with other people. So if I wanted to, for example, change exam or make changes to this example funks player, um, this is already a GitHub repo, so I could make a new one. Um, you know, maybe I'm going to be repository name, I could be, you know, team seven or something. Uh, you know, this could be my battle code bot. And you, I would probably want to make this private so that other teams can't see my code. Um, and you can initialize it with a readme or whatever. And then if you create this repository, you'll get the same thing that I, you'll get something like the example funks player that we were just looking at. Um, but, you know, it'll be empty. So then you can, you know, put in the example player, like this one, whichever one you want. Um, and I'm going to work from this example funks player one so that the changes that I make will be available after lecture and everything. Um, but right, so now that I'm in a Git repository, so I did Git clone, remember, you would do that with your new repository with your team. You can add collaborators. So if I go over to collaborators here, you have to put your browser. Okay, you can add the rest of your team. So, like, I've already added Kelvin. Um, and, and then, yeah, once you've all cloned your repository and you're inside the repository, you can get, say, git status. And that'll tell you what your, stat what your current status is. So, right now, it tells me that I'm on branch master. I'm up to date with origin, which is what's on GitHub on the site. Um, and I have these untracked files. So, these changes since the last commit which is like um, cementing a save in time. Um, all of your commits will be forever visible afterwards. Um, so like you can see, this is the edit history so far in example funks player. Um, those are all commits. All right, so I can see that the modifications that I've made so far, just to add this replay, um, I actually am not interested in uploading all this replay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say rm replay.vc19. And now if I do git status again, well, I'll do ls first, so it's gone. And now if I do git status, git says, OK, you're on branch master. You're up to date. Great. So let's start making changes. Question. Yes? Uh, you have to install git. So if you have you installed git? Yeah, so the way to install Git is to go to Google and type Git install. And then if you click on this download link, it'll tell you what to do for your operating system. <laughs> um, but then once you have that, you should be able to do Git whatever. Um, and if you're on Windows, I would recommend using the, the Git bash shell. Um, I can't demonstrate because I'm on Linux. But if you just search for Git bash in start, it should come up, and that'll give you a terminal like this one with the Linux or with the bash commands. All right, so all right, so we cloned example funks player. Great. Um, again, you're going to want to like make your own repository and clone that because none of you are going to be able to upload to example funks player, and the whole point is like to be able to upload code and download it from your teammates and everything to collaborate. Um, 
So yeah, you'll want to make a new Git repo, make it private, um, and then have everyone on your team clone it. And you'll have basically the same setup as me, but instead of example funks player, it'll be, you know, Jane Doe's team battle code bot or whatever. All right, so we're on branch master. We're up to date. Working directory is clean. Let's start making some changes. So I'm going to use Sublime because I like Sublime. Um, and we're going to open the battle code folder or the example funks player folder. If I can find it, why are these not alphabetized? Okay. Example funks player. All right. Great. Open. Okay. Don't need. Oh, that was the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Open folder. Do, do, do. Example funks player. Great. Open. Okay. Um, so now we have a way to edit our robot. And here it is. Fantastic. Um, okay, so this is the example Python bot. Um, this is the one that I'm going to use just because I think most people know Python. Um, so, yeah. All right. So, first, we'll see that every turn it just chooses a random direction and tries to move in that direction. Um, if it's a crusader and if it's a castle, um, in the first for the first 10 turns, it tries to build a crusader um, at 1-1 which um, since zero, 00 is the top left, 1-1 one, one is down and to the right. So southeast. Um, all right, so it's building a crusader southeast whenever it can. Uh, and then the crusaders move around randomly. Great. We would like it if the crusaders would like attack each other um, so that we can destroy the other team. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the command to attack by going to the docs and looking at the Python documentation. Which one is this? JavaScript. Looking at the Python bot reference. So first things first, we need to know all the robots around us, right? So we're going to get, where is it? I think I passed it. get visible robot map. Which one is it? All right, visible robot. Great, this dot, oh, it's probably the same thing. So self dot get visible robots, I assume. All right, oh, this, okay. So we're gonna take self dot get visible robot map and yeah, so that'll give us the robot IDs at different different places. That seems inconvenient. I'm actually going to get visible robots, which gives us a list, so we don't have to look through the whole map. Great. OK. So let's see. If you're a crusader, instead of moving randomly, let's first look at the visible robots. So visible equals that. Uh, all right, so this will also get us any robot whose radio broadcast can be heard. Um, so not just visible robots, but also audible robots, I guess. Okay. Um, all right, so now, but we're really only interested in robots which we could attack, right? So let's make a list of attackable bots. And then we'll just say four are invisible. We can... If, all right, so now we need to figure out if a robot is attackable. Um, let's see. Surely there's a helper method for, yeah, okay. So we want to check the r.team. R so if r.team does not equal um, self, well, self.me.team uh, and, okay, so we want it to be on the opposite team. We want... We want to make sure it's in range. So 
Okay, I think that's probably going to be in the helper methods. So we'll say if, okay, they need to be, I guess they need to be visible, that's, that's for sure. Um, so if they're visible and Is there like a can attack? Hmm? Sorry? Yeah, right. So this this is visible bit is actually I put it in here because get visible robots will also give you robots that are far away but just like radioed something really loudly. So like if something radios from all the way across the map, it'll show up in get visible robots. Um, get visible robots is really like every robot you can possibly sense anything about, whether it be because it's in your vision radius or because you heard a radio broadcast. Um, sorry, that's a bit of a, a misnomer, but I guess it could be get visible and audible. I don't know. Um, but anyways, so we're interested in, in robots which are visible because those are, those are in our attacking range. Although I guess it's possible that you could have a robot that is not visible but in the attacking range if the attacking range is bigger than the visibility range. Do we have anything like that? So I'm looking for attack range. Uh, and is this bigger than the visit vision radius in any instance? No. All right, so we don't have to worry about that edge case. Um, great. OK, so now let's find, we need to figure out how to get our attack range and whether whether this unit is in our attack range. So the specs object here has like a handy dandy uh, I don't know list of all these like game constants. Um, so we're gonna do the right thing and figure out what it is via the specs. So let's self.log uh, specs and just see what this spits out. Um, yeah, so we can see what the proper, what the thing that we're interested in is stored under. So I'm going to run another game. Um, let's see, go up to PC19, run. Okay, uh, we can keep running against the example JavaScript player, that's fine. Okay, great. I hit Control C to terminate that process, um, just because it's already printed what we're interested in. So let's see. Now I'm going to copy and paste this into Sublime so that I can use control find. Uh, new. OK. So let's find cru oh, not what I wanted. Crusader. Crusader. OK, so Crusader is 3. It looks like. Hmm. Wait, the game constants for like attack range and stuff are stored in specs, right? Yeah, so the way it works is um like this. So um it's dot units. So you see how there's a big units uh item over there and everything uh, uh, in units is like it's like a list of items. Oh, so I see. if you see above that, like each unit has a number. So as I mentioned before, uh, like castle is zero, church is one. So what you can do is you can do specs dot units, and then the index would be like specs dot crusader, and then in there you could get like attack range and stuff like that. Sweet. So let's log specs uh, units to see that thing and we'll take the right index which is specs crusader um, okay great so let's see what that prints out and we can get we can make sure we're looking at the right thing okay great so we get yeah how much construction carbonite fuel capacity fuel per move all that good stuff um, this this unit has okay great so we have our attack radius range, which is what we are interested in. OK, so I'm going to comment that back out. Keep building this if statement. All right, so we want to say if this specs crusader, uh, what was it called? Attack radius. So we're going to need this. OK. 
Okay, and now we need to see if the robot of interest is within that range. So let's go and get, there's a helper function for that. We'll say, uh, oh, Python, okay. We want the distance one. Hmm? There's no distance helper function. All right, that's fine. Distance is simple to calculate. So we're going to say, uh, do, do, do. Uh, we'll say dist squared. That's going to be annoying to type. All right, all distances are squared distances. So distance is going to be r dot x. Uh, R dot x minus self self dot me dot x squared plus the the equivalent for y great okay so that's our squared distance uh, and then we want to see if so remember this this attack thing actually is a list with the minimum, the minimum and maximum radius. So we want to say if this specs minimum radius is less than or equal to distance and the maximum or yeah, the minimum and then the maximum is greater than or equal to the distance, then this unit is within attack range and it's not on our team. Um, I guess we don't even need to do is visible because if it's within the attack range, it's visible. So we'll just remove that. The thing we should probably be careful about is that we can't get the robot's x and y coordinates unless it is visible. Oh, that's why I put that. Yes. Okay, so if it's visible then we'll be able to get the x and y coordinates. Yes. Yeah, so in this list of robots from get visible robots, um, all of the robots that are visible that are actually in your in your vision range, you'll be able to get like the x and y and health. You won't be able to get carbonite or fuel that they're carrying and stuff like that. Um, but you can get their x and y. There will be some robots in this list whose x and y you can't access um, and that's because those ones have signaled something over the radio that you can hear, in which case you want to use, I think, r.signal. Let me check the docs before I promise that. Yes, r.signal tells you the, the actual signal, like what the robot said. Um, and then the signal radius should also be visible, which tells you how widely they broadcast that signal. Uh, all right, great. Oh, and if you're a castle, then you can also see castle talk which is what that robot sent via castle talk. Okay, great. So now we have this if statement for if they're on our team, or if they're not on our team and they're within attacking range. Uh, so now we want to attack. So let's see. We also might get weird undefined behavior with distance uh, because we haven't checked that it's visible before calculating distance, and in distance we use r.x and r.y. Oh, true. Let's take this then and put it here if and so we'll say if it's not visible oh, oops. how did I do that okay. if it's not visible then we'll just continue to the next robot all right so now everything these are only only the robots that are actually within our vision range now all in vision range can see X Y etc Okay. All right, so if it is not on our team, we want to put this in the attackable. Attackable dot append uh, r. Okay, great. So, uh, all right, so I'm going to add comments here. Okay, so get attackable robots. Okay, and now we need to choose choose a robot to attack. Um, let's just choose the first one. So we'll say if attackable, 
if the list is not empty, then attack first robot. Um, okay, so what's the attack command? We'll go over to the reference and see what self.attack wants. So self.attack, it looks like, takes an offset. So we're going to have to do, well, we're going to have to figure out the difference in position, which is easy. So we'll say r.x minus self.me.x and r.y minus self.me.y. Great. So that's our dx and dy for attacking that robot. Um, oh, bar is not even a thing anymore. So we'll say r equals attackable zero. Okay, so now we're, that's should attack the first robot. Um, and I've written enough code now that it shouldn't run when I run it because I probably put a bug in there somewhere. So let's see what happens. Oh, great. Okay, so it looks like the match is running just fine. So let's go back and look at the replay as soon as that is done. Oh. Great. All right. Replay. Replay. Fine. Select. All right, so let's see. And that was when we run that, or when we ran that, the red team was the Python bot. So we should expect to see red team bots destroy blue team bots if they ever get anywhere close. I'm going to skip ahead some. Uh, OK, let's keep going. I'm not sure why they went on impassable terrain. That means I probably need to update BC19 again. Um, all right. This one's getting close. Let's see if we can. Ah, let me pause it. All right, let's see if this robot has taken any damage. Health is still 40. All right. It may be that this map was too big for them to randomly encounter each other. You think they got within range at one point? Yeah, they were like five distance five. Uh, all right. If they were refreshing the page and then doing an NPM uh, update. <laughs> all right. I will do that. Stuff looks a little fun. All right. Let's do the NPM. Since we won by greater talents, but the red is a long path. Oh, yeah. Maybe red was attacking itself. That would be cool. Uh, all right, I'm, I'm going to update and make sure that these things are up to date. Uh, OK, let's check our code. It is distinguishing between teams here. <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's see. We, maybe we should log who we're attacking. That's, that's good coding practice. OK, so self.log, attacking. Uh, and then we'll say, I wonder what the string representation of r is. Then, yeah? So do you see yourself in a like, get visible robot? Do you? Yes. Yes, you do see yourself in get visible robots. Well, self or r.team should not match self.me. Or should match self.me.team, so that should cover that, I think. But all right, well, hopefully this attacking print statement will help us figure out what's going on here. Uh, this has been refreshed, so let's run a new game. All right. Well, that's a mess. OK, so let's see what it's printing out. Type error, great. Robot.pyKeys is not a function. Hmm. lost the ability to scroll because it's printing so much. OK, let's do that. All right, so let's look at what that could be caused by. Uh, all right, so if there's an error during a turn, 
you won't actually get the log statements from that turn. Um, so, Let's just try commenting out. yeah, so we're going to do the comment things out until stuff doesn't break method of debugging. Let's see. Let's see if the attacking was causing the problem. Nope. Okay. Let's see if this if statement's causing the problem. Hmm. Nope. Hmm. I forgot to mention, we will also be teaching debugging as part of today's lecture. Uh, okay, so let's see if it's getting the visible robots. All right. All right, well, get visible robots works, so that's always a good sign. Um, all righty. Uh, okay. Creating the list is fine. It's this for loop that they don't, that doesn't seem to like. Let's just put something, some non no op in here and let's see what happens. All right, so that's fine. Let's see if it's self dot is visible. Great. All right, so I must be using is visible incorrectly. So let's go back to the docs. That's a, that's a, that's a bug in some artifacts. <laughs> I know what's causing that. That's not your fault. All right, actually, that's a bug, and it's being fixed as we speak. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're not going to check if it's visible at first. We'll just check. If it's not visible, will like X be non, non or something? Um, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So you can actually just check if X is in R dot keys. Uh, okay, yeah, so we'll just instead say if X in R dot keys, which is sort of a hacky way to check if it's visible. You should access this as a dictionary, not as a field object, because it is a dictionary. Oh, okay. So it's a dot Y, the dot say to do. Uh, uh, oh, right, because this is the Python one, not that, yes. All right. Um, also, R is a dictionary. So that's why this r.keys thing works. And my whole r.x notation down here is wrong. And we'll fix it in a second. Um, so if x is not in the keys, then we want to ignore that bot because it's not visible. Um, so we'll say equip what? Two above question mark. OK. So oh, great. OK. Um, Cannot read property apply. So let's see if what this, let's just comment this all back out and print out our list of visible robots and just see what that does. So we'll log visible. All right. OK, great. So this looks defined, which is a good sign. Uh, so that is indeed a list of robots. Uh, that's that's good. So it must be uh, something about. Oh well, a fix was just pushed. So is it up? OK, great. Um, also, this would just definitely be faster if I use the update flag, I think, instead of, yeah. OK, great. Oh, no, it's 2.8. Um, I just added this update flag because it tells NPM. Uh, still 2.8. I got the email that went up. So it must be the caches. Oh, oh, that's OK. Thanks. Thanks, NPM. <laughs> All right, well, while that's going, we're going to uh, assume that this works and start changing the uh, my R notation here. So I'm just going to use regex to find well, every time I use R dot. OK, 
This is a cool thing that Sublime can do. I'm just editing it in multiple places. Great. All right, and I think that we are now treating R as a dictionary, which is the right thing to do. Uh, and we'll update battle cone. Hmm. Do sudo npm uninstall dash gpc19 and then uh, <laughs> the hammer. All right. Is that should that happen? Should people have to do that? No. <laughs> okay. <NPM>. Great. <laughs> uh, all right. It's <laughs> still too funny. <laughs> Uh, okay, nice. um, here's what you can do. Uh, this is a little gross to put on the string. But if you add these three lines to the top of your file, you can use the in syntax. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, wait, so if I add... Yeah. I'll both be back, okay? Yeah, and yeah. now I can use... You can use uh, x in the dictionary. Wait, that's not... We're, we're just trying to see if it's visible. Uh, yes, but... Like, oh, like oh, the the thing that we yeah, I understand. Okay, so equivalently, all right, we're gonna we're gonna do the hacky way since battle code is or npm isn't updating PC nineteen. Um, all right, so <laughs> right, uh, if x not in r, then it should be not visible, not visible, hacky do not use at home. Okay. Uh, great. So BC19 run. Great. Oh, nice. All right. So that works. Um, did we have everything else commented? Oh, wait. It's not attacking. Darn. Okay. So now let's turn on the attacking thing. Great. All right. And we'll run another game. Okay, so great, that's all good. And it looks like we do have some print statements where it is attacking, so we should see that in the replay. Very exciting. Oh, I can't scroll faster than it's printing. Okay, great. Let's go back over to the replay section and upload our new replay as soon as it's done. All right, I'm ending the game early because I'm impatient. Okay, now we're uploading. Now it tells us zero point two point nine is available. Nice. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. Fine. I'll click and select files. Have it your way. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Skip around into the middle. Again, red team should attack blue team. So they're still moving on impassable terrain, which is weird. All right. They say they'll look into it. Hmm. Do they ever get close? Yes. Okay, this one might get attacked soon. Let's see if its health went down. Nope. Wait, which team is which again? Uh, yeah, red team is, is the attacking one. Hmm. Oh, there's, those are definitely close. Okay. Let's see what this guy's doing. All right, his health is still 40. So let's see. Oh, all right, now they're really close. All right, health is 40. Health is 40. That seems, that seems wrong. Um, both teams have a lot of fuel. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so it was indeed attacking earlier. Yeah, for example, here. Turn 759. Can we seek to turn 759? No, that's fine. Okay, so this is round 558. Let's see what happens in 759. All right. So 
So round 759, oh, it must be this encounter. Uh, all right, so it's attacking the robot ID 1618. Oh, maybe it's this one. Hmm? This one? Oh, it's of that particular robot. You're right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but this is also going to be this tur the turn of this robot, so that's not terribly helpful. I should have printed something use more useful. But regardless, I would expect this one's health to have decreased. All right. Let's check that we're doing the right thing. Yeah. It's attacking their position minus our position. Is me dot x supposed to work, or should it be dictionary also? Oh, that, that could be the problem. Yeah, that's probably the problem. OK, so I'm finding every time I use me dot, and I should actually be doing this. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Uh, this. Great. OK. Let's try that again. All right, as soon as I see an attack, I'm just going to end the replay. I think that was one. OK, great. Those were some attacks. Which thing? Sorry. The, so before, yeah. Oh, how I made it dictionaries. How I made it, uh, yeah, so the, yeah, the, the change that I just made were um, from like the me.x to the dictionary access. Um, for the, the Java and JavaScript ones, um, it's all like, you know, me.x, me.team, or whatever. Um, for Python, they're all dictionaries. Um, so, this was, that was just me forgetting that Python was the odd one out. Um, it's, all, it's all equivalent. It's just that in Python, um, the objects are, are given to you as dictionaries. Um, so yeah, the, the thing up here that I was doing, this if x not an r, um, this was to check. So for all the, all the robots, the visible ones, we can see the x values. And the ones that aren't visible, uh, you can't see the x values. So this is equivalent to checking if it's visible the like polite and correct way. Um, but we just did it this way because it was a quick fix while we were waiting for NPM to put um, 0 0.2 point uh, nine up. Um, but yeah, no, you definitely want to use this dictionary notation for Python. Uh, OK, great. So let's see if that replay looks any better. All right. So there were some attacks near the end. Uh, all right, that looks good. All right, so let's see what's happening here. Um, <laughs> health is still 40 for those guys. Oh, what? what is that? Oh, that's a castle. OK. So their health is 40. What is this red? This health is still 40. All right, let's find a turn on which something definitely attacked. All right, so it attacked robot ID 2926 towards the end here. Let's find 2926. All right, well, we'll do it the slow way. OK, this is not 2926. Not 2926. Nope. 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 Oh, maybe 2926 died. That would make sense. Oh, over here. Is this 2926? Nope. There was definitely an attack there at the end. 
Also, there are f fewer red bots than... Oh, that's because red didn't use all their carbonite. Hmm. Alright, well this guy should definitely have less health. So we must be doing something wrong still. Alright. Let's see. Uh, they definitely attacked. This definitely... Let's, I guess we'll add some more log statements. Uh, we'll put it here, I guess. At, uh, at location, and then we'll have this. That should just be a tuple. Okay, great. Um, we'd also like to know what the overall turn is, so that it's easier to figure out what the heck's going on here. So we should be able to. Is there a helper function for getting the round of the actual game? Uh, no. Robots don't have access to that information. But castles oh. are all spawned at the beginning of the game, so they have that knowledge and you can communicate it. Oh, okay, gotcha. Alright, so we'll just have to look at our castle's print statements to see what round it is. Great. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's run another one with those hopefully more informative log statements. And it tells you, does it tell you if you try to attack a space that is an invalid space? Yeah, you get an error that you can catch. Okay. Let's see, were there any attacks in that game? I forgot to be watching. Okay, I guess not. Um, oh, and the answer to the question of if you try to attack something that you can't attack, uh, it would throw an error. Um, Yeah, so if you yeah, you can only attack locations that actually have an enemy unit there or friendly unit, I guess. Um unless unless you're um a preacher, right? Cuz then you could attack empty squares. Uh, right? Creatures can actually only direct their attacks on units, but technically it's Oh, interesting. Okay. So yeah, preachers can only directly like can only attack units, but their damage is still spread out over the surrounding area as well. Great. Okay. Okay, so we've got a lot of log signals here. Let's upload the newest replay. Is this the same map? I'm just going to refresh. Okay. Great. So... We've got our replay, our replay file, and let's look for a castle so we know what turn it is. So, castle health, uh, it looks like 726. I don't see any castles after that, so it must be turn 726. We'll go to that turn and see what's happening. No, this is not. 726. All right. It looks like this robot. So start turn, Crusader Health robot 2413 is not that robot. Nope. 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 Are there even any other red robots? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, right, I'm just trying to make sure that the team colors aren't flipped or something. I'm looking for a robot. 2413. Ooh, I think should be here. Alright. This replay file also does look suspiciously like last game's replay file, and it has more rounds. Uh, it overwrites the existing replay so file, right? Sure 
Yes. Oh, no. No, I'm not. That's probably the source of all of our problems. <laughs> Great. Um, also, if we wait like five seconds, there'll be a new dancer visualizing. Oh, sweet. All right, we're going to wait for the new fancier visualizer, and I'm going to delete the, the folder that I was mistakenly pulling from. Um, so I'm going to go out one level, and then go into downloads, and then go into example funks player. Or not go into it. Or yeah, example funks player. Because that's where I was getting my replays. Great. So this is like uh, important to highlight. Um, <laughs> When you try to view all the replays, weird things will happen because the replays rely on being produced on the most recent version of the game. In case the Twitch stream didn't hear that, didn't hear that, um, replay files or the visualizer depends on the replays being produced by the most recent version of the game. So if you try to view an old replay file, it might just be nonsensical. Uh, all right, is the new visualizer sweet? All right. Wow. Wow, so much information. We have the round. We have labels for how much carbonite and fuel and everything. Helpful instructions, larger icons. Wow, wow, wow. All right, let's see what's going on here. Great. All right, so we've got a bunch of red units moving around. I'm going to skip ahead to where they hopefully start shooting the blue units. Oh, I think we just saw some. All right, it'll happen again. Gonna pause. Alrighty. <coughs> is this guy in range yet? Oh, wow. <laughs> the information is now well formed and in the in the display amazing and persistent no less wow i clicked on a unit and look you can see it's position posi uh, position changing amazing okay so we're oh, i think we're watching this blue unit right now he's got 40 health but he's about to be next to oh a red unit right here this he seems like he should be in range now all right see does he take any damage no fantastic uh all right something has got to be happening over here nope nope darn all right let's find a unit that definitely got shot okay so robot 2413 on turn castle turn 726 yeah Nate, can you go to your code for a second? Yes. Yeah, so attack, this is, this is another fun lesson. Attack is like a final action. It's one of the things you can only do like once in a turn. So it actually has to be returned. So oh. Line 38 should be returned self of attack, which is why we are not attacking. Oh. <laughs> All right. Thank so you, Discord. For the, yeah, thank you, Discord. For the Twitch stream, you, you can't just do self.move or self.attack. You have to return that action as the thing that you're doing. Um, can you? So you can't attack and move on the same turn then? Okay. Cool. Is, there isn't an attack cooldown this year, right? So you could attack every turn. Okay, great. All right. But it takes fuel, of course. All right. So, yes, you can only move or attack on a turn, um, which is interesting because I guess you have to choose which one's more valuable. Um, but also you have to return your actions. So that's why nothing was happening. Great. Thank you, Discord and Twitch chat. And really everyone except me, because I, I just seem to not know what's going on here. All right, let's run a new one. And hopefully it'll actually work this time. <laughs> uh, OK. Uh, let's see, waiting for an attack. Oh, my laptop's going to die. Uh, okay. All right, so the final blue failed to initialize. Okay. I don't know what to think about that, but that's fine. 
All right, so on the very last turn, it looks like there was an attack. So let's see if we skip ahead to that. Oh, over here, perhaps. Oh, it just died. Wow. Oh, you know, all of blue team died. That's sad. Okay, this castle has health 100. Oh, oh, it's getting shot! What? Oh, sorry. I was just kidding. All right, wow, look at this. There's only one blue unit left, probably because they all died. Let's see. Oh, none got created. Well, I guess the blue team had an embarrassing performance this match. <laughs> oh, okay, so, but someone in, in lecture physically has pointed out that this one blue castle only tries to only tries to build on the impassable terrain here, so it never it never builds a unit. But what's good is that despite blue teams I don't know, inability to produce units. Red team still accidentally seeks out their castle and destroys it, winning the, winning the day. Wow, look at that. The health goes down 10 every time, as you would expect. What a glorious victory for red team. Okay, great. So now they, they attack. <laughs> uh, I guess the next... All right, so so now that I've made this, this really useful and and... Uh, important change for my team. Um, I should I should send it to the rest of my team, right? So I'm going to go back back here, and we'll do get status. And oh wow, so I have a modified file, uh, robot.py here, and I have a new file, replay.bc19. Uh, I'm going to save this replay. I'm going to choose to save this replay for posterity because it's such a glorious victory. Um, so I'm going to rename it to um, MV is move, which is how you rename things. Um, so I'm going to rename it to uh, victory1.bc19 so that we can save it and view it forever until the game changes and the viewer doesn't display it anymore. So we're going to do that. All right, so now if I do get status, I should see, all right, good, a new file, victory1.bc19. So... Now what I need to do is add add all of the changes. So you do git add, and then I can just do dash a for all. So this now, if we look at git status, this is going to say, oh, OK, now you have these changes that are staged. They're ready to be committed. Um, your modifications to robot.py and this new file, bc or victory1.bc19. OK, so now they're ready to be committed. Everything is, is green text. So we're happy. All right, and we'll do git commit. And I want to add a message, a commit message, which you should always do. Um, it'll force you to if you don't do it this way. So git commit dash m. Uh, I'm going to make this wider so that the command isn't hideous. OK, git commit dash m, m. And I'm going to say what I did. So add ability or uh, make crusaders, crusaders attack. Um, yeah, that's that's the commit message. So this is going to save it in the like git saved history. So now if I look at git log, which tells me all of the, the git commits that have happened, I can see my new commit, my new like snapshot of the whole code. Because um, these are these are all sort of like snapshots of the past history of the code base. Um, so like if I wanted to, I could go back and see what the state of the code was when I fixed the readme. Um, but yeah, so now we have our, our history, so we made Crusaders attack, great. But I still need to share it with the rest of my team. So if I do git status, I can see that I'm ahead of Origin Master. And remember, Origin, Origin is what's like on the website here. And this is all that the rest of my team can see. So I'm ahead by one commit, I need to do git push to publish my commits. Um, for a good practice, I'm going to pull first to see if any of my teammates have done anything. It says I'm already up to date, which means no, no one else has like published anything new since I've been since I last pulled and updated my local code. So I can go ahead and say git push. And now, if we you can even look on the website, 
it should be up, and everyone in the world can see now that Crusaders in example function player will attack things. So, great. All right, so now my teammates could download that um, and, you know, make their own changes. So, for example, wait, do, Kelvin, do you want to make a change? We'll show conflicts. Okay, sure. Okay, so my, my teammate, Kelvin, says, no, 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 we shouldn't, we shouldn't attack the first robot in the list. We should attack the last robot in the list or something. So while I'm, I'm over here you know, running more matches, being pleased with my changes that I've just made, you know, maybe I'll, I'll add a comment right here which says, oh, you know, attack. Uh, it's like you know, R is, I don't know, I'm trying to, R is going, or yeah, so blue team sucks. Ha. Okay, so if I like make this change or something, and all right, so so Kelvin, Kelvin just unknown to me has just made some changes, and so I made some changes also. So I'm gonna get add my changes, and then I'll get commit. Um, you know, trash talk. Uh, all right, so now I've saved my changes. We'll say get status. All right, I'm ahead of origin master, but I should make sure to pull and see if anyone else has changed anything in the meantime. So if, when I say get pull. It's going to say, oh no, there was a merge conflict right here. So there were, there were remote changes, and both of us, both of us modified robot.py, and the automatic merge failed. So if we had modified different parts of the file, it would have been fine. It would have just merged it all, all on its own, and that would have been that. But there's this merge conflict. So it's in robot.py. So I'm going to go to robot.py, and now I see, OK. Head, this is this is me. This is like what my local version is. Had this, um, you know, this version of the code, which had you know my comment that I wrote. Whereas the remote one, and this is just the the hash of that saved version. So like, if I went online right now and I looked at the most recent commit, it's this 99d7833, which is this 99d7833. So um, this is this is the remote version. This is what the rest of my team has pushed while while I was you know writing writing code and doing my own thing. And GitHub is just saying, hey, I don't know what to do. Both of you change this line, like figure it out yourself, and then save the result. So I decide, no, I think I want to keep I think I want to keep attacking robot zero. So I'm gonna delete what Kelvin did, but maybe I'll remove this message because. He didn't put any messages on his, and maybe I've reconsidered my trash talk or something. OK, so now this is, this is what I've decided I want the result of this merge to look like. Um, you know, I could have kept either one. I could have changed both and kept neither, whatever. This is the, this is the version that I think I want. So I'm going to go. So I've made my changes. Um, there weren't any other conflicts, so great. Um, now I need to say. Let's just say get status to see what's going on. Right, unmerged path. Oh no. Okay, so now if I add the file, git add dash a. Great. So and now get status. Okay, I still need to commit my changes because you know they failed to merge. So I can do git commit. And I'm going to choose to override the message. Or so, all right. So if you don't send a commit message, what's going to happen is it'll send you into this default commit message thing. Um, so this is a text editor called Vim. Oh, my laptop's going to die. Um, this is a text editor called Vim. Um, basically, all you need to know is colon wq writes whatever's there and quits. Uh, it quits out, it quits out of the editor. So it used the automatic merge commit message, and I need to plug this in urgently. OK. Great. All right. So that's been committed. We can look at the git log to see what the heck has been going on. So it looks like, all right, after I did my make crusaders attack thing, uh, Kelvin, see, um, you know, made this this other commit, small fix to code, 
and then I made my commit. So these two did not happen like on the same machine or anything. These were like totally remotely. Um, but then I pulled I pulled his changes down to my local version with um, with git pull, and then I made this merge commit where I had to combine the conflicts between the last two commits. So now that's that's the like history of the current code. If I say git status, it'll tell me that I'm ahead of origin master by two commits because the version online that everyone can see only sees this commit right here. But I have these two two whole commits that you know the rest of the world doesn't see. So I'm going to need to push those so that everyone else can see them. But first I'll pull just in case. All right, and then I can push. And now my merge, great. That is live, and we have the latest version back online again. Uh, and the rest of my team can pull my changes. You know, if there are conflicts, they'll have to resolve those conflicts, um, and then you know, upload the merged version and all that. Um, yeah. So whenever you do git commit, that like you know makes a snapshot frozen in time forever, but it doesn't upload it or anything. It just does it for your local local version of your code. You have to do git push or git pull to communicate with the outside world. So pull will get all the changes that other people have made, and push will push all the commits that you have that the rest of the world doesn't have back up to GitHub. Um, yeah, so there is there is a lot more to Git than just this. Uh, and there will be another lecture, I think, on Monday next week, um, plus or minus a day. Um, not minus a day, plus possibly a day. Um, so yeah, next Monday or Tuesday, we'll go into Git a lot more um, and like uh, go into you know better version control and stuff like that because um, everybody modifying the exact same copy all the time like this can get crazy. So we'll talk about how to resolve that. But for now, this should be enough to to just definitely get started with collaborating with the rest of your team. Um, yeah, Git add, Git commit, Git pull, Git push. It's the basic. The basic Git workflow. Um, yeah, and there's also plenty of tutorials and stuff online um, if you want to dive in more in depth before Monday or Tuesday. OK, great. So we've made some basic modifications, done a very deliberate and procedural example of debugging, um, made units attack each other. Great. I don't know. Should we call it? Should we do more stuff? All right, that's all. That's all for today. Are there any last questions from any of the three sources of questions? Yeah, it's Twitch, Discord, anything. All right, great. Uh, oh, we have a question. Yes. So the question is, uh, when you get the robot, when you get the fuel, it gives you both the robot's fuel and the global fuel. Like, which one's which? Is the question. Oh, um, so this dot me dot fuel is the robot's fuel, but this dot fuel is the global. Fuel. Okay. So yeah. So this or self, if you're Python, dot me dot or dictionary notation, if you're Python, um, fuel. So me dot fuel is going to be the like current robots fuel that they're carrying and like self or this dot fuel without the me or like not in a robot at all it is going to be the team's global fuel all right any questions from twitch discord no oh okay josh is gone all right uh well that's all for today then uh if you want to come down and get help setting up like Git or something with your team, we'd be happy to do that. But uh, otherwise, good luck. <laughs>